I got some phone calls, different things for prayer requests, and uh, no apologies, but just I'm sorry, amen. Uh, so good to see you today. Uh, today's service, May 30th, 2021, here on Memorial Day, we're so glad to have you with us. We say happy Memorial Day to everybody. Those joining us by live streaming, we thank you for being here today. Appreciate you for being here. I uh, want to go to the prayer request. Our theme for the week is, have you given God your all? And I misspelled it on my paper, but that's all right. Uh, pray for God's protection over all during COVID-19. Remember to pray for all the prayer line requests. Remember to pray for Charles and Lois Clark, David Brooks, and her request for Cooper Burrow, Chad Bridges, his sister, uh, Peggy and his mom and Donnie. Uh, they all here, praise the Lord. Uh, Louise Grant, uh, she needs a touch. Geraldine Buford, my sister, to put her back in the hospital this morning with her foot, so please pray for her. And Ken, uh, pray for Betty and Charles, they have needs, and Marcella and Eddie. Uh, pray for Dee Dee Woody and her daughter Sue, that God would touch her. Uh, Kaylee's in the case, and Logan Fletcher, uh, still having a lot of pain, pray for him. Uh, uh, Dee Dee Woody, I, I mentioned her, and Sue, Kaylee and Kay Logan, Nettie Tig, Roy and Cat Wilson, Wendell Weaver, and some of these people I mentioned here, but pray for them all, amen. amen. Uh, Todd and her family's out of town, there's several families out of town. Several people working, we're praying for all of them. Brother John, different ones. Uh, special request, Sister Annie's recovering from a surgical procedure. She's doing good, she's here. We praise God for that. Colleen Woody is now in Peak, a nursing facility of incurable in rehab. She's had a better week this week than she's had in many weeks and months. Please keep praying for her. Marcia's brother, Michael, is very sick with cancer. Please pray for him. Please pray for Debbie Brooks, son Chad Brooks. Pray for uh, fervently for bereaved families, and we've had several weeks here. Keep praying for Mary Marsh family, Don and all his family. Keep praying for uh, Steve Fuel's family, Tracy and all the girls. Uh, keep praying for Ralph and Shirley Wilson and all those affected by Greg Wilson passing, and uh, Brother Foster went to be with the Lord. And I got a sweet card from his family this week. And I'll read it later on uh, or put it on the board. But we appreciate it all, his wife, his children, all his family, grandchildren, and uh, especially Gail here in the church because she's here with us. Uh, all these and loss of their loved ones, several people from Gastonia Church of God uh, died during COVID and was sick. So just, just pray for them and pray for all the bereaved families. Uh, unspoken request. Anybody out here got special? Anybody out here got special? Sister Marcia. Mention Michael, but um, he called me Thursday morning and um, he told me that he's decided he's not gonna take chemo and he's just gonna let whatever happen. He said, you know, he didn't wanna be sick. So, doctor and the doctor talked to him and he still didn't change his mind so the doctor told him that he'd give him less than three months so I said well we'll just enjoy what time we have left and we'll just put it in God's hands so y'all just pray for us we're um, doing what we can to make him comfortable and just love on him and just I talked to him about the Lord he told me he, he told me to tell you preacher he said you tell that preacher so I got down on my knees I asked the Lord to help me to send his angels just to put the camp around about me. So, you know, Amen. as long as he's all right with the Lord, I'm okay. That's a bittersweet report. Was, if you didn't hear all of that, that was concerning Marcia's brother, uh, Michael. The prognosis is not good, and uh, but he did tell her everything's all right between him and the Lord, and we go on. Amen. Amen. And we pray that God turns it around. Amen, Donnie. Barbara Robinson's text in prayer for, has some prayer for herself and for her mother-in-law, and I thank right. the Lord for his favor. All right. I think we got all that. Amen. Anybody else in the middle here? Good to see Sister Wilson. She's had a rough week. Keep praying for her. Over here. Kitty. All right. Pray for Jim. All right. Pray for Jim. 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 Pray for
for Jen, but Chad. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you, America. All right. Good to see y'all back. Anybody else? Debbie, good to see you back. Anybody else? All right. Did you give all the newsletters out? I did. You did? Okay. Well, there, there's, there's two two remaining back there in the back. Give them to me. I need to see them. Jack, please write We got a prize to give away. We're going to try to do it. Make sure that everybody sitting in this room has got a chance to get to have it. Except me and Betty. We don't want it. Amen. Not that we don't want it. We just don't want it. We're the one that got it together. We know who's going to win it. Amen. I want to make sure that uh, these three are not winners. This is three is left over. So somebody's going to win this prize. Where's the prize? Over there. You can look at it later. Well, next time. <laughs> this is Memorial Day. More Memorial Day weekend tomorrow is Memorial Day. I ain't swimming off it. <laughs> Red, white, and blue lamps. Oh. Amen. Everybody see them? Yeah. Okay. How many say I could use these? Yeah, I could use those. <laughs> This is a little bit of fun. How many would say, I hope it's me? Well, everyone that's got a chance to race got a chance. And I don't know who's got to win anything, but there's some of them. Some of them right before it says, Happy Memorial Day and the two flags. Some of them have stars there and some don't. But whoever's got one that just has one single star above those where it says Memorial Day and it's red, you won this. Has to be red. Somebody got it. Look around because we're going to go one, two, three, and we're going to say that number is gone. If you don't know, look at somebody beside you. Okay. You can't tell what right here. Are you sure it ain't silver? I mean, I heard it's silver. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I just want to know if you got a red one. Sister Wilson won. Okay. We did it fair to everybody. We had three colors that would win, and we give all three of them away. And we had them in order. Red one was the first one. Silver one was the second one. And gold was the third one. So if you had them, that was the order we were going to call it out. In case it got lost or somebody didn't see it, we were going to take all day with it. That's probably the fairest way we've ever done it. Every one of you had a chance to win it. Some of you come in late before and you never had a chance because they wouldn't give it out. This way we knew that somebody out here had it. Amen. I stand to your feet and pray, and after you pray, come by and bring the offerings. He's going to lead to prayer, and I'm going to step out of the way, and when he's through, I'll come back and preach. Sister Marcia is going to sing the special for us today. Betty will have a little course or something before I preach, and I'll be back. God bless you. Apologize again for being late. Tommy, lead us to the Lord in prayer. Pray, Lord God, you'll have your way in this service today, Lord. You just reach down and touch, Lord God, and meet the needs of you people, Jesus. Pray for all these requests this morning, Lord. You just reach down, touch, uplift them, Lord God. Give them peace of mind, Lord God. Whatever they have before you, Lord, we put it before you, Lord, that you can turn things around, Jesus. Anoint the singing this morning, anoint the preaching this morning, Lord. Everything that's done, we give you the praise and the glory, Lord. Just be with us throughout the day, we give you the praise, Jesus. Amen.
wonderful country and to be on the board for you this morning. coming to your presence this morning with singing Lord God we're here to worship you this morning Lord God we're going to turn our eyes toward you Lord I hope you'll be pleased with our worship Lord God now we just ask you blessings on this offering Lord as we bring it to the altar Lord God and we'll be sure to thank you for what you do we give you all the praise in Jesus name Amen Amen
son of all. Yes, he is. No matter what's going on in your life, you got the Lord in your life, yes. you just got to keep fighting on. That's right. Amen. Amen. Y'all pray for me. too much. I told you, Mark, the Spirit gets hold of me every once in a while. And I try to do things that could let go to later. Amen? And uh, when it comes down to something I have to do, and then what you got to do falls apart, and you ain't got no choice. You know? But we love you, and we're glad to see you today. We appreciate you being here. I got this working now, I think. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Working. All right, praise the Lord. Sing this chorus with Betty a couple of times. I'm on the battlefield. Would you do it? Battlefield, oh my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield, oh my Lord. Everybody sing, come on. I promise you that you all know it, come on. Serving till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield, oh my Lord.
shake somebody's hand or wave at somebody. Show yourself friendly. If you want to refrain from shaking hands, we're not mad at you about it, but we do love everybody. And it's so good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we got a little bit lengthy reading message this morning, but we want to talk on the subject this morning. Lord, remember me. Amen. 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 Anybody know what this day is about today? You know, tomorrow, Memorial Day, you, you're, you're, you're uh, recognizing the wars, conflicts, the civil war on up to today. Uh, the people that give their life. Amen. Amen. Veterans Day is all veterans. Memorial Day is just the fallen. And I preached several messages on Memorial Day, but I promise you I had never preached this one. And uh, I believe I'd have remembered it if I had. That it's brand new. Amen. Amen. Uh, last year I preached on, where, on Memorial Day. I remember where the Bible said that the woman that, uh, the woman in the Bible that Jesus said that, that, that washed his feet and, and anointed him with oil. She said this forever, and he proved it to be true. He said, wherever this is spoken, from now on, yes. this will be a memorial for her. Yes. And last year I preached on having a memorial. You know, what kind of memorial are you working on? Similar message, but different. Lord, remember me, the life of Joseph, and it's what Joseph said, and we was talking to a butler and a baker. The, the butler ended up being blessed. The baker uh, went the other way. I don't want to talk about the baker this morning. I want to talk about the butler and Joseph. So I'm going to skip a few verses. There's 23 verses in that chapter. I'm going to read verse And If you handicapped need to be seated, I'll understand. If you can't and you're able-bodied, if you're as able as I am, stand with me for, 20, for 23 verses, and I'm not going to read them all. Uh, we're going to read 1 through 3. It's on your newsletter. 6 through 15 and verse 21 and verse 23. And I'll let you be seated. Amen. So if you would, just read it with me. It's right there on the board. I hope I'm not in your way. Maybe you can move to the left or right, and I'll try to stand still. It's on the board. Let's read it. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison. Notice this, the place where Joseph was bound. We're going to go to verse 6. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning. And he looked upon them and he said, uh, Behold, they, he looked back up. And he looked on them and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officer, that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? Why is so sad? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpretation of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me then, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and said, to him in my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine were three branches. And it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth. And the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. And I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. And I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler. But think on me. Slow down on this verse. Think on me when it shall be well with thee and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me and make mention of me unto the king or Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. For indeed, I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. You know the story of Joseph. 
And here also have I done nothing that they should put me into this dungeon. Verse 21. And he, Pharaoh, restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. In verse 23, Joseph said, or the word says, Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forget him, and the Bible forgot him. Amen. Father, I pray that you bless this word today. Use it for your glory. Let everything be done today, done for your glory. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, we know that there is a payday coming. We know that as Marcia's song said, we've got to fight on, Lord. We can't quit fighting. We've said that in many different messages in many different ways, but I hadn't used that song before, so this is brand new this morning. we got to fight on. And we thank you for everything you do, and I can't wait to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I won't make you stand for it because I may slow down on it, but I'm going to read the newsletter, and you can put it up there until I'm through it, and then you take it down and go back to the text and leave it there until we're through. Amen. But uh, I, I want to wait a minute before I get there. I just want to tell you that uh, so many people, veterans, I, I, I'll call something, but blacks, whites, uh, other countries, Chinese, I could call them all. So I'm not leaving anybody out on purpose. If I forget you, who you are, this could be everybody. Everybody at some point in their life have been forgotten. Soldiers have been forgotten. I'll talk about A.C. Wells. He's gone. He said they don't look after the veterans like they ought to. Right. Amen. And there's some that say amen to that. And if you believe amen. that, you do. If you don't, you don't. But that's just preaching. So they ain't nobody that poor white preachers, poor black preachers, rich black preachers, rich white preachers. I try to be fair about that. They ain't nobody don't feel like sometime or another they ain't got a fair share. Uh, members of the church, whatever color or creed you are, don't feel like it sometime or another that preacher didn't do me right. Sometimes that sometime that uh, policeman didn't do me right. We all got the stories. I had a wreck. It wasn't my fault, but I got blamed. Amen. There is a wrecking and day coming. Somebody hear me. Amen. And uh, we're not home yet, children. Coronation day has not come yet. Somebody hear me for you. Amen. Oh, amen. And God will not forget you. Amen. There will be a day of remembrance. Amen. And I am so glad of that. I believe that and know that. And uh, I just feel like Joseph, you know, what he went through. I can just uh, tell you a little bit about it. I may read the newsletter at the end, but just bear with me a minute. Joseph went through a lot of stuff. Amen. Joseph was, uh, and, and I've been a long time since I've done the, 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 the study this to tell you how old they were. But from memory, I think Joseph was a teenager between 13 and 17 when all this started happening to him. He was his daddy's favorite child, uh, as the world would call it today. Whether he deserved it or not, that's not the point. He was his dad. His brothers felt like that he was his dad's favorite child. His dad made him a coat of many colors. And you know what? Where he messed up, he didn't make the other ones one. Amen. He didn't make the other ones one. This is back before Jesus' day, so this was thousands of years ago. But I'm telling you, he messed up because he didn't make nobody one but Joseph. And Joseph could have got a bad attitude, and to my knowledge, he never did. Somebody hear me. If he did, you ought to show it to him in the Word of God. But uh, he didn't. He, he was just there. Well, the other brothers, Reuben, I can't remember them all, but I can just tell you some of their names. Reuben, the Bible said he was unstable as water. Amen. And so Reuben was one of them that got mad. And I may not call another name, but that's what he dealt with, those other brothers. And so he went on, and they they come up with a plan. They didn't like him because he interpreted the dream. 
and gave it to his daddy. And his dream was something like this. It may not be word for word, but his dream was something like this, that one of these days, I'm going to be up here and every one of them boys is going to bow down to me. And God told him that. So God said it. You get mad at the wrong person if you get mad at the messenger. Somebody hear me. Amen. You got to listen to what God says. If God said it, somebody tells you something that you don't think God said it, I just reserve judgment. I reserve judgment because the Bible said that if you mark prophets by that, if they say something that don't come to pass and they tell you God said it, then God didn't say it or something happened. God changed his mind. But I mean, you know, reserve judgment. And it would go to your grave and say, you know, I never was sure that was God, but you ain't holding it against nobody, and God will deal with it if it was or what. And somebody say amen. amen. But these brothers got raging mad enough to commit murder. They didn't want to commit murder. They just wanted to get rid of him. If somebody had come by and scooped him up, they'd have just got rid of him, you know. If if the Lord had died, let him die, they sure would have been happy as brothers you ever seen. Amen. amen. But he did. So they was dealing with it. They got together what to do about him. They was all together from memory, not reading the story this morning. They were all together and they seen Joseph come walking. And one of them said to the other, or they all said, there comes that dreamer. Amen. I'm telling you the Bible story. because When I get through the story, I'll preach it. I'll be through. Amen. But he said, there comes that, that, that dreamer. So they took Joseph and uh, they uh, threw him in a pit and they were going to leave him there and, and whatever happens to him happens to him. So, you know, their plan wasn't completely premeditated. Some of it they just worked on a, a spontaneous, you know, whatever spontaneity, I guess, is what I was looking for. They just, they just did it. When, when it was convenient, that'll work today. That'll work today. Let's do it. Let's throw him in the pit. And uh, one of them said, well, he'll just be back. Well, give me that pretty coat of his. And they put the blood of an animal on that coat. And they took that coat back to their daddy. And I'm not even going to try to call names because I don't want to get confused. I'm going to tell you the thought here. They took it back to their daddy. And their daddy said, poor is Joseph. They said, we don't know what happened to him. Oh, and they lied. But let me tell you the rest of it. That, that was their plan. They, was, they, they, they did do that. But as they left him down there, and they were going to go back and tell their daddy that some animal killed him, they saw some Egyptians come by buying slaves. So plan changed. You ever seen people like that? Yeah. You know, I'm going to kill him, but I don't have to kill him because that guy's going to take him to, uh, to, to Europe and they'll never see him again, you know? And so I don't have to kill him. All I want him is out of my hair. I want him out of my way. I want him out of my situation. And so with Joseph, they did that. And uh, so they looked over there and saw these Egyptian people and buying slaves. They said, we got one over here. So they went down there and got him and they sold him into slavery. You know that story. They took that coat, put blood on it, went back to their daddy and said, don't know what happened to him. We found this coat. And and his daddy said, they said, you know, they didn't have DNA back then. Somebody hear me. Right. They said his blood, somebody must have killed him. Somebody must have killed him. So they took the coat of the daddy and years went by. And if I remember straight, it was least till he was 30. So if he was 13 or 17, it was 10, 15 years, 20 years, something like that. That they lived with that lie. I wonder how long some people live with a lie, you know? Come on. That they know in their heart. I mean, you stand up, you commit adultery and preach, and if the church don't do nothing about it, you can do that till Jesus comes. And if you're wrong, you can answer to him. I think that's wrong, adultery. Somebody say amen. Amen. Right. Amen. amen. You can have an affair going on in the church with some woman in the church, preachers I'm talking to, and, and it can go on for a year. And, and I know situations, I've had them tell me, I'm not at liberty to tell you, that I had an affair back when I started, it lasted a week, nobody don't know nothing about it, and I'm preaching today. If God didn't forgive them, somebody knows something about it. Amen. Somebody hear me. 
Now, you know, if you, if you embezzled $50,000 from the church and nobody never found out, and I've asked God to forgive me. Well, if he did, you'll be forgiven. There's nothing but blaspheming the Holy Ghost that I know of that's unforgivable. Amen. In this world or the world that comes, what he said. So there's a different opinions of what that means. But if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, God's word said there is no forgiveness in this world or the world to come. come, on. come on. So that's why I tell people that don't know a whole lot about the Holy Ghost, you better not say nothing about it. That ain't the only way you can bless him. I ain't going to get into that. I will if you want me to. I'll preach that some other time, but not today. But anyway, uh, they went on. 25, 30 years later, they met up with Joseph. But in, during that time, uh, he was in the prison. And that's the story we're reading today. And from that story, I hope I'm not chronologically wrong, but if I am, it happened. But from that story, he went, he went from, the, from slavery and the pit to the palace and then to the prison. That's the way it was. So in prison, this was the last story here. The next one was the palace. He, he got sold into slavery. And uh, uh, Pharaoh, or not Pharaoh, but the, the, it might have been Pharaoh, but the Lord's that was in that, the, the, the master, Potiphar, I'll get the right name in a minute, Potiphar's house, and uh, Potiphar liked him, that's who he sold, who bought him, he liked him, and you know, there's several places where the Bible says, even in the prison, even in the, even in the uh, uh, pit, uh, even in the palace, even in slavery, he ain't got favor. Amen. So if you got favor, I said, I want to tell you, the, the Memorial Day ain't got here yet. Somebody hear me today. Amen. The Memorial Day hasn't come for you yet if you haven't made it to heaven. Somebody hear me. Amen. You, you know, if you're a soldier, tomorrow will be Memorial Day in this life. But I'm telling you, everybody may not get a fair shake on that one. But I can tell you one that you will get a fair shake on when you stand before the Lord. The Bible said, I saw the dead, both small and great, stand before God. And they were judged according to the deeds done in the body. Anybody know the next line? Whether they be good or bad. Good or bad. So that's when it will all be laid on the table. It will all be right. A, fam a famous president said, had it on his desk, the buck stops here. That's something everybody's used for years. And, uh, and maybe it did as far as he was concerned about government. And I'm not for him or against him. I'm just telling you. But the buck won't ever really stop till we stand before the Lord. Amen. It won't ever really stop till you stand before the Lord. Amen. But in that prison, from the pit to, to, the, to the slavery, in that slavery, Potiphar liked him, made him a high ruler in his house, and, and, if, and if nothing that happened, he would have uh, lived a good life the rest of his life, even though he was in a slavery situation because Potiphar liked him. Amen. Found favor. Amen. All we need to do is find favor. We need to find favor first with God, and God will show us the people in this life to find favor with. Somebody hear me. That will help us do the things we need. Amen. Amen. I'm taking my time. Amen. I've been running all morning since 6 o'clock. I ain't running no more right now. Amen. 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 I'm taking my time. So I just want to tell you that when Potiphar was blessing him, the devil got in the middle of it. Somebody said, when the Lord's blessing me, when the Lord's blessing, the devil's messing. Amen. So that's what it was. Potiphar's wife, I don't know what he looked like, but I'd say he was a lot younger, better looking man than Potiphar. And so his wife got him in a bad situation and said, come and lay with me. He said, oh, no, I ain't doing that. I, to this point, he'd done no wrong. I ain't doing that. And she said, lay with me. And he said, no. And he, he wasn't going to do it. He just wasn't the type. He wasn't going to do it. I know I'm talking to somebody who's been in those situations. 
I hadn't, so I'm not talking about me, but I've heard people say that, you know, just lay with me. Nobody will never know. God knows. Right. He wouldn't do it. Amen. So he ran out the door and went right out the door. Either she got a part of his garment or hung on the bed or something, and she cried. And I don't have to get plain or vulgar this morning, but you know what she cried. Potiphar come running. He said, who did this? She said, that man that you had up here, Joseph. So he went and got him and did what any good husband would do if their wife told them that somebody done them like that. He threw him in prison. Wasn't guilty. Y'all lied on him. You ever been lied on? Yes. You ever been talked Amen. about? Amen. You ever been mistreated? Amen. You ever been abused? Amen. Amen. You ain't the first one, and you won't be the last if the Lord's coming is... It's more than an hour away. Amen. You might not be anyway. Amen. But I'm telling you, it'll happen again. But he went to prison, and, and that's where our story starts. It says that after these things, the butler, the king of Egypt, and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt, and Pharaoh was mad at them. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, and, and against two of his officers, the chief baker, baker and the chief butler, and he threw them in the ward of prison. And the average person said it just happened to be the ward that Joseph was in. I don't think it just happened. Amen. I think God's up here sitting high, looking low. And he sees a servant named Joseph that for, uh, you know, many years now, several years, I won't, I won't tell you how much, has been mistreated. And they're going to throw him in prison. So God said, if you're going to throw him in the prison, you're going to throw him in the right one. Yeah. So he put him in that prison with those two men. And God knew, Joseph didn't know until God told him, but God knew that one of them men would get forgiven and one of them men would go back to the king's house again. So he let him, it's all right if I just talk. He, he let him buddy up with Joseph. And so here this butler is buddying up with Joseph. Now I have trouble with too many words to say there. But he was buddying up with him, and they got to be good friends. After, you know, the Bible talks like he was friends with them instantly. They was friends to him. He went in one day, and they all sat there sad, and drooped down, and lost all their joy. I mean, just ask you every once in a while, you ever seen anybody who's lost all their joy? Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Might be your fault, might be their fault. Uh, and, you know, in the situation, God could be behind it like Adam and Eve and all the stories in the Bible said where God got wrong for somebody. He didn't get wrong with them without a reason. But it could be God, it could be the devil, it could be your wife, your husband, your mom and daddy, your son or daughter. But it's me, old Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Amen. Amen. So these two men that Joseph, he didn't want that spirit to rub off on him. Because he had a good spirit, because the Bible said even in a prison, God blessed him, had favor with God. He didn't want to rub off on him, so two friends he'd made, whether it was a day, a week, or a month, a year, don't make no difference. They got to like him, he got to like them, they were in the same ward. he come in one day and they're singing a Somebody Done Me Wrong song, amen. amen. And while they were singing that song, he said, what in the world's wrong with y'all? Why are y'all so sad? Why are y'all so sad? Amen. We're down to about verse 6 or somewhere where I was preached there. And uh, Pharaoh's officers were with him in the war, the Lord's house, saying, Wherefore, verse 7, why he looks so sad? And they said unto him, We dream a dream. He began to tell them about the dream and everything about the baker. I'm going to skip. You can read it. It's all in Genesis 41 through 23. You ought to go back and read the story if, you, if I'm talking something to you you ain't never heard. And I doubt if I am many at all. But if I got one person, they never heard this. I challenge you sometime this afternoon. How long will it take you to read 23 verses? Chapter 40, verse 1 through 23. But for the sake of my message this morning, I'm not going to say no more about the baker than I have to because I'm just going to tell you when the butler mentions them together. It's the only way you'll hear me talk about it. But he dreamed a dream and said... And so we got this, this dream. And so down to verse 15, he's concentrating on the dream. And there, there are some, some, might be some in there that goes with the baker, but I want to stay with the butler if I said that wrong. 
Amen. The butler's the last one we're going to talk about. He's the one that right before Joseph said, Lord, remember me, got blessed. Amen. So anyway, in verse 9, the chief butler told Joseph all his trouble and about his dream. You got it there. Verse 9, verse 10. I done read it. I'm going to take the time. I won't read it again. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, he said in verse 11. And I uh, uh, pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, the, 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 the fruit, you know, the grapes. Verse 12, and Joseph said unto him, this is the interpretation of it. And he goes down 13, 14, and 15, where I read. In three days, Pharaoh's going to lift up thine head and, and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou, what you did when you was a butler. Put it in everyday term. Verse 14, Joseph is saying the same thing that the message said. Listen to, this, this is this message, so you got to hear this first. But think on me when it shall be well with you. And please, I'm, not, I'm adding words, but it's right there in verse 14. You read it with me. If it's not on the board, you read it in your Bible. It was there on the board. He said he basically is saying in verse 14, when it shall be well with you, please show me kindness. I pray thee unto thee. It don't matter. You know, if you sit around and have a pity party, Joseph wasn't doing that. That, that butler didn't know nothing about Joseph. He was just telling me, I've been through some storms in my life. And I've been through some hard times. Anybody ever been through any hard times? Yes. And he said, when you get back in the king's house, you tell him about me down here. He said, I'll do it. I will do it. Amen. And I don't believe he lied. I believe he forgot. I believe he forgot. But that 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 is, either one had the same effect to Joseph. You know what he done, I believe? I'd have to look, be sure, don't quote me on this, but I believe he stayed in prison two more years. Two more years. It was some time, and I'm thinking two more years right now without looking at it for me. And he stayed in prison, so it wouldn't matter to, to the devil or to Joseph, either one at that point. It didn't change things. He stayed in prison two years. If he had lied and never let his name go back across his brainwaves again, uh, the same effect for Joseph, two years in the prison, because you you told me, I told you, when you get in there, you're going to tell the king about me. And so time passed, and he didn't tell the king nothing about him. Anybody getting anything out of that this morning? Amen. Nobody? nobody. Uh, uh, two years passed, nothing didn't happen. And so we get to this place in verse 14 where he begs him, please have mercy. Verse 15, he tells him he's not a pity party. I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews uh, where my dad and brothers were at. Here also have I done nothing. They should put me into this dungeon. I have no reason to be here. And so the next few verses talks about the baker and the, the dream that Joseph had for bakers. Uh, I ain't got you. You know, we talked about it before Jimmy used to say, uh, nobody wants to hear nobody that tells them and that's telling them good stuff. So he had two men here. One of them he was telling something good. And the other man, I promise you, didn't want to hear what he told him. He said, you're going to go back in there with him. He's going to take both of y'all out of here. And there's one place. Let me just look at it. When the chief baker, now he's the one that got in trouble. Verse 16, I didn't read that verse. Let me just share it with you. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good. Amen. Y'all going to get out of here. Y'all going back to the king's house. He's taking y'all both out. It's good. The chief butler, when he saw it was good, you let a preacher start uh, his prophecy, whoever he is. We let him start his prophecy with saying, God has good things ahead for you. And they ain't a person in this world that's Christian that wouldn't perk up their head. Yeah. Let me hear what it is. And so that baker was the same way. I said I wasn't going to talk about him. I'm not, but I'm okay on time. Uh, if if y'all not, you got plans. Hope we get back at six o'clock tonight. But I'm okay on time. I've been rushing all day. I took the brakes off. 
I don't have any brakes on. Amen. And, I, and I'm depending on God because all I got is my newsletter wrote down and the scripture wrote down. But I studied this and I know God gave it to me. So I'm going to slow down and give it to you. Amen. 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 It, ain't, it ain't no message I'm reading to you up here. If you're cold, raise it up a degree. If you're hot, turn it down one. Don't, don't make us all suffer. Amen. 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 But let me get back to my story here. He said, when you get there, remember me. And if you lied on him, if you forgot him, then we shouldn't do neither one of them things. Amen. Amen. Sometimes God blesses me. And six months later, I say, God, I promised you I was going to do something. If you got me out there and you did, I didn't. And I go back and I'm glad he's merciful and give me a chance to make good on my promise. Ain't yes. about you. Yes. Amen. 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 I feel the presence of God. Yes. Give me a chance to make good on my promise. But if... If, if I had died before that six months was out, before I remembered what I promised God, I'd have still stood before God, and he's a merciful God. And if he knew I just forgot it, he'd probably be merciful. But it would have still been on my record that six months ago, you promised me if I get you out of that, that you'd do such and such and such. And if I hadn't done it, lying or forgetting it, it has the same effect. Amen. Amen. So as far as Joseph was concerned. But I couldn't resist telling you that when he said he saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, have you ever seen, you've seen, you can put people in, your, in pictures in your mind when I'm telling you these stories. He sat in there and he said, he said uh, in, in verse 16 when he saw that it was good, Joseph wasn't even talking to him. He said, hey Joseph, maybe Joseph knew it wasn't going to be good for him and he wasn't going to volunteer I mean, I know people that I've told before, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to hell. Yeah. Amen. According to God's word. Not James Chambers, according to God's word. Amen. And the next time I see them, they're still doing it. I, I, I most of the time don't tell them again. Because you know what you're going to do? If you got a good friend in that person, a good earthly friend that do what they could for you to help you, you're going to lose an earthly friend. Yeah. But if 10 years passes and they come back, and say, so you remember me that time you told me I was going to go to hell? And I keep doing that. I would have to say, you are. You are. You are. Because the message don't change. God's message don't change. Man's message changes. Yes. What somebody stands up and said they'll do today, tomorrow may be a whole new different world. Right. I'm talking about the church world. I ain't talking about nobody individually. Amen. But, but God don't change. If God said it, the only time God changes it if we make a difference in our life, and like God did for, uh, in, in Jonah's day, and he spared 120 souls in Nineveh, he wasn't playing. He didn't tell Jonah to go tell him in 40 days, I'm going to overthrow you if you don't repent. He said, I'm going to overthrow you in 40 days. And they repented, and he repented of what he said. His mercy kicked in. Amen. 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 That's when faith kicks in. That's when mercy kicks in. Woo! It does kick yeah. in sometimes. Yeah. Somebody hear me. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so when it kicked in and when it come in there, amen, and God forgave them 120. And you know the story. I won't preach that this morning, but Jonah got mad. Amen. And so, but he wanted to tell them the truth. He, if he had been, if Daniel, if, if uh, Joseph had been just like Jonah, Joseph said, he'd look at God and say, you tell him that. Hey, man, I ain't telling him that. I want him to get his head cut off. I want him to get hung. He deserves it. I've been through torment for the past 5, 10, 13 years, ever how many have been at the time. I don't care if he gets out of that mess or not. He did it himself. That's what. That's a Jonah attitude. But it's not a Joseph attitude. Not a Jonah attitude. It's a Jonah attitude, not a Joseph, not a Job. I mean, you don't have to die and go to hell just because you're having a bad day, bad week, bad month, bad year, bad life. Amen. Somebody Amen. hear me. Amen. If we do it, it's of our own accord. Amen. So anyway, if I had notes, I'd just say the next line, but I'm, I'm waiting on the Holy Ghost, so you got to wait, wait a minute. Amen. But he said... Because that dream's good, why don't you tell? I had a dream too, because because he saw that. Uh, I mean, the baker, the baker, the butler, you know, baker said, "I'll take that all day long. You going back to the king's house, and the king's going to restore you, 
And when you do, if you would, don't forget about me down here in prison because I'm going to still be here. And so when the baker saw that that was good, verse 16, he said to Joseph, I had a dream also. Joseph said, you did? Paraphrasing, yeah. Here's what my dream was. I ain't even going to get into it, but he tells him. It, it sounds a whole lot like, like the, the butlers. And if I'd have been going to interpret it, I'd say, sound like you're all going to get out of here. Amen. <laughs> sound like we're all going to be blessed. But God didn't tell me. He told Joseph. And sometimes if you tell me something, God didn't tell me. He told you. If God tells me something, you don't think it's right. God didn't tell you. He told me. Somebody hear me. Amen. 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 Now, if I didn't take time to do that, you'd be looking at somebody look like they're foaming at the mouth. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying not to do that. Amen. Amen. I'll take another one in a minute if I need to. Amen. Amen. And I'm not being mean. Amen. I look at me sometimes. I say, I can't believe they looked at me for 10 minutes like that. <laughs> you know? So I'm going to start taking my time because I want you to, I don't want you to be, I wish he'd wipe his mouth. I wish you'd wipe your thoughts. Amen. 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 Preach. Amen. Ain't nobody here but me, Tommy. Amen. I ain't got nobody to prove nothing to. Amen. Praise the Lord. You say, that's on the screen. Somebody's going to come back to you, but I hope it do. That means they were listening to me. Amen. I got one preacher friend that said a lady got outside the door and stuck her finger in his face and said, Brother so-and-so, mine and your spirit does not agree. And she's taking that right out of the Bible. He said, I'm glad. He said, she said, why? He said, because you've got a bad one and i got the right one. Amen. Amen. I'm glad our spirit don't agree. Amen. I mean, the Bible says if two don't agree, they can't walk together. So this woman was putting that preacher on the carpet and telling him, I can't walk with you no more because mine and your spirit don't agree. Amen. Come on. But as long as the one that had to write and keeps fighting on, that's all that matters. Memorial Day's coming. Somebody say amen. amen. I said, Memorial Day's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll be late next Sunday on purpose if that'll cause God to anoint me when I get in the pulpit. Praise Somebody God. hear me. You say, you going to do that? I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what anybody says about me. I matter what God says about me. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give me a minute. Let me get another water. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Hallelujah. See, I, I, when I ain't got notes, I have to think about what was I at. I was telling you what the baker said. I had a dream. Tell me, it almost sounded like Joseph's dream. But it didn't end that way. He said he's going to hang you from the highest tree he can find. He ain't forgive you. He's going to call you back up there. He put you down here to cool off and let him cool off. And he thought about it and he did you wrong. So Mr. Butler, he's going to take you back to the kingdom. And Mr. Baker, he's going to take you back to the kingdom. But you ain't going to like what he's going to do. Amen. He's going to kill you. And so we don't hear too much more about him down there. I skipped the verse. Next to the last verse. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. So if God said it, he could get mad. He could have shot Joseph. He said, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to take my, my knife that I use over here cooking. I'm going to cut your head off. He could have done that if God would have allowed him to. But in three days, the king would have called him up there and hung him. Right. It wouldn't have changed the message. Somebody hear me. Right. Amen. Anybody getting anything? Anybody get anything? Yes. Amen. Amen. Wouldn't have changed the message. But his memorial day, the butler's memorial day was coming. He was going to get up there and he was going to say, put the grapes in there, give them back to the king just like you always did. And he's forgiven you of all the things you've done wrong. And you're going to go back to where you started. That's what justification means. Just if I had never sinned. Oh, you'll remember it all your life. I mean, you know, if I run over a cat 20 years ago, I probably could still roll that up in my mind. I don't like to hurt animals. Amen. 
I might have forgot about it, but most likely if I've done anything like that in the last year or two, I haven't forgot about it because right. I didn't like it. Amen. Amen. Somebody hear me today. Amen. But Amen. here he is, and he says, Mr. 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 Butler, I forgive you. Mr. Baker, you're going to die. You're going to die. Didn't like it. I'm sure he didn't ask Joseph nothing else until he, till the king come and got him. I don't like what he said. Amen. My tax man told me this year that one one occasion, and I don't have that need today. Don't don't be feeling sorry for me. He said I went to him thinking, sure he's going to tell me I was going to get a couple thousand dollars back. He said by the end of the month you need to pay twenty seven hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm the one that made the money last year. I'm the one that took the losses or didn't show up last year. Showed up year before and worked against me this year. Whatever the case. But I could have thrown that paper back in. I'm going to find me another account of how much I owe you. I'm going to find somebody else to tell me. But you know, it was right there in black and white looking at me. I owe $2,700. And I've done it many times in my life. And I don't know the government nothing now that I haven't paid them. Don't get no wrong picture here. And I didn't have the money. I had to move stuff around, borrow a little bit here, borrow a little bit there. But I knew it was right. Amen. Amen. But a preacher can say, if you don't pay your tithes, God's going to deal with you at the end of the month, and you'll find you another church. That's right. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Oh, go ahead. I, I don't, you know, you can't say he planned all that because you, you look at him. See if anything I'm telling you is on here. Amen. But I'm about to get through. And he hanged him. Verse 21, he the butler got just what Joseph told him. Verse 22, the baker got just what Joseph told him. I'm, I've been real careful not to miss my words. If I meant the baker, I meant the butler. I think I done it right, but if I messed up, forgive me. Amen. But when he left, he got in favor of his hand. The butler did, and the baker got hung. We don't have nothing left but the last verse that I read. I'm going to read the newsletter, and I'm going to let you go. You can come on back to the music. The last verse says... Lord, listen what it says. Let me read it. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forget him. I mean, I know some of y'all been here an hour and a half, but I haven't been here but an hour. <laughs> Amen. So I, I'm correct. Amen. 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 A lot of time when you come in, you've been here 45 minutes. I've been here two hours, you know. Just reversing it today a little bit. I've been here an hour. Y'all been here an hour and a half, two hours, three hours. Amen. But the Bible said, Joseph told him, remember me, and he forgot him. Let me read you the newsletter, and it'll, it'll all become clear, and it's not long. It won't take me, I don't know how many words it is. It won't take me two minutes if I don't stop. It won't take me a minute if I don't stop. Listen to this. It's on your newsletter. Still on the board. Look at it with me, and I won't stop and read it. Memorial Day is the time we remember those from all the wars and conflicts past for their service to this country in which we live today freely. God said in his word, there is a book of remembrance being kept, and I've said that lately, which God will use when he makes up his jewels in the end. And please, Amen, that line, if you believe this next line. This will be the greatest memorial day the saints of God will ever have in their life. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The second paragraph is just three. The second one, the third one's real short. The second one's shorter than the first one. God remembered Noah. That's right out of the word of God. Some of this is word for word, but if you want me to take it, I can show you what it is there before you leave today. God remembered Noah after the flood, period. God remembered Abraham's prayer and spared Lot just before he was going to destroy the cities of the plain where Lot dwelt. Amen. The last one I want to tell you about, God remembered Rachel. There's a bunch of them in the Bible. I just picked the first three going to Genesis. That's good enough. I don't have to tell you all of them. The first three that it says that about are the three I'm reading. Started in Genesis. God remembered Rachel and responded unto her and opened her womb. Amen. The, the Bible word said he hearkened unto her. You know what that means? I mean, you say that's elementary. We're not, we're not in kindergarten. You don't have to. 
Some people, I've had people all the time say, I don't know what you meant by that. Well, let me explain it to you. The Bible says that God hearkened unto her. The computer will red line that word because that's not a word in the English language that they recognize. But God said it thousands of years ago to them that because uh, she hark she called him, he hearkened unto her. And he hearkened unto her, that means she responded first. Or he responded to her, 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 her cry, her prayer. Amen. Somebody hear me. Amen. Amen. And I can tell you, I won't preach that story today. But if you go back and look like it, it probably looked like it wasn't going to happen. But the Bible said God remembered her. Amen. Amen. Last, last paragraph. And you can stand to your feet. I don't want anybody to stand all day. As we remember... I don't care to keep you here all day. I just don't want to make you stand all day. As we remember the fallen military in our country tomorrow, don't you ever, ever forget God will always remember his children who fight to the end and give their all to him. So if I had a one closing word to say to you today, it'd be the title of the song Betty asked Marcia to sing, Fight On. And he you got some prayer requests or got something you want to say, give them to Donnie. He'll bring them to me. And we'll be letting you go in just a minute. Amen. And if you want to pray today, if you're in good shape and you say, well, I'm sure glad God's going to remember me. I wish he'd call me today. Then we all just say amen and go home. Amen. But I got a feeling that God wouldn't have given me this message if there wasn't somebody here this morning that didn't have at least one little thing, might be five years ago, five minutes ago. What you thinking right now about me or what you thought about me 20 years ago? And it may not have nothing to do with me. Amen? But you're thinking of some little something. God brought that to your mind before you can do something about it. Somebody put the brakes on, didn't they? Amen. Where? Word, you can do something about it. God don't tell you about something and remind you every day about something to torment you. That's right. Amen. He reminds you, you go to church, you say, I ain't coming back here no more. I've listened to you preach your last message. And if God wants to, and you can go to the first, first church. I ain't going to call it a name. But to the first church somewhere, going by the first church, and they, every denomination, they sum up first Pentecost, first Baptist, first Presbyterian, first Lutheran. So you can go to the first church where you want to and where they might not have heard from God in years, but if you go there tonight or next Sunday or Wednesday night and, and the preacher says the same thing I'm saying to you right now, you ought to, at some point, you ought to say, God must be talking to me. Amen. And then if you don't ever want to come back here, that's between you and God. I hope that's not the case and I sure hope you come back. I heard Jimmy Swagger say the other day, it's an old message, but I just clipping the, clipping the channel. And he said, and I thought he was going to say what I've heard all my life. He said, he said to these people, he said he told some people about the way they're living one day, and then they said, well, we're going, we won't be back. We're going to go to that church right down there. And he said, I wish you wouldn't do that. I wish you wouldn't do that. And I thought it was going to be like what I'm telling you this morning. I wish you wouldn't do that. If, if something I said in the Word of God offended you, I wish you'd repent. If it's something I said that offended you, I'll take it back. Somebody hear me today. Come on. But Jimmy said he told him, after saying it three or four times, I wish you wouldn't do that. I wish you wouldn't go to church down there. And he said, because... I know that brother. He's a personal friend of mine. And he's got all the problems he can stand right now. Yes. <laughs> Amen. I didn't say that, Jimmy Swagger did. Amen. Amen. You need to repent. Ain't nothing going to work. But you just say, God, I'm sorry. Whether you do it here, whether you get mad at me in three weeks from now, God pulls this back up to your mind. And you hear that Sunday. And you say, I ain't never got over that last message, brother. Let me pray. But if you want to pray today, you're okay to pray right now. 
Sing us a verse, baby, and I promise you, I'll dismiss it if I don't come. Sing us one verse, one course, whatever you play.
I said, just come. There's a guy, the sweet little boy that I've met in business, and you don't know him. But he just, I won't call his name because if he wants to be listening to me. But he's just sweet as he can be. And I don't know how he stands with God. I don't know. He just is the most, best, sweetest little moral boy I ever met somewhere in his 20s. And I've asked him every week to come to church. And he come in this week, and I didn't ask him. But you know what I told him the last time I talked to him about it? I said, if you come one time and you don't want to come back, I won't ever ask you again. That's fair enough. That works. That works. Tommy's been here almost 40 years. And his mother-in-law and father-in-law and his wife and his sister-in-law, I think, might have already got in that time. And me and Brother Foster went to see him, and he looked like a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. I mean, you know? He couldn't get us out of there that quick. And he's told it himself, so I'm not embarrassing him. But he looked at his wife and he said, if you'll get off my back, said, I'll go to you one time. So I've learned a little bit in 42 years. You know, you asked him, I ain't take it back. I still want you to visit, but I won't heart hammer you no more. Amen. And so I'll go one time. God said, that's enough. Get him there one time. Got here one time, he went to the altar. 38 years, 39 years, somewhere in that vicinity, 40 years. I hadn't been here but a couple years when they come and they've been here ever since. Just like several of you in the church. I got people. Marcia got saved 30 years ago, she's still here. Donnie didn't get saved here, he got saved in the Soul Harbor ministry, got right, and then came to this church. I mean, I appreciate that. Somebody hear me. But I told that little boy one time, you don't come back on their ass again. And, and every service in the last three or four weeks, we've had somebody in the building that I said that to. You don't have to come back, and I might ask you as a friendly, just say, we have an homecoming Sunday, why don't you come? But I won't never put you in a bind no more. You won't have to say, yeah, I'm coming, though no, I ain't. I just might say, hey, you invited the homecoming. I ain't, I ain't talking about that. You invited to the singing, you invited to the revival. I do Sunday night service. But I've told several, and I've had several. I probably, probably in the past month, I probably had five people that's been here one time and ain't been back. And I said, if you'll come one time, I won't ever, you won't ever feel obligated. Just if you love me, if you think I'm halfway right, come, in, come to the service one time. If you don't want to come back, then that's between you and God. I thank you. If you listen to me and say, well, I listen to you today, but I ain't never going to listen again. Thank you for listening today. God bless you. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for coming Wednesday. Last Sunday, last Sunday night. God bless you. I thank you to be said. Brother Donnie just misses. Go ahead and turn that off. Amen. Goodbye.